Who made you the bag tag police? previously on and in the airport trying to commute to new york and then he breaks out into this like hacking cough the border is closed what part of canada did you really think you were going to good morning crew please excuse my appearance it's actually not morning anymore it's afternoon but i've been up for a few hours planning some things for my channel and stuff but it is a little afternoon and our pickup time is 2.50 so I thought, why not start getting ready early? And start ironing my uniform and everything. But I don't know if I told you guys that I had one more A day left after this and they assigned me a turn for tomorrow. Even though this trip ends after midnight today, they assigned me a turn for the afternoon that releases after midnight the next day it's time for me to get ready all right you guys so obviously i'm in the elevator i don't think i told you guys what the schedule was today we have two legs we do Detroit to Dallas and then Dallas to LaGuardia. So I'll see you guys when I get onto the plane. Okay, you guys, so we are on the plane and we're on one of our newer planes, but this plane is special because it has a window in the bathroom. Unfortunately, this flight is 100% full to capacity, so it shall be interesting as to what happens but i will speak to you guys again once we get to dallas you guys i'm finally done this trip but we have a lot to talk about once i get to where i need to go because a lot went down on this last leg from Dallas to LaGuardia. So I will see you guys once I get settled in and everything and tell you about my day and what's to come next. All right, crew, as I promised, I will come back and tell you guys what went down on this flight. So the first flight, Detroit to Minneapolis, no, Detroit to Dallas wasn't bad. Um, we just had a lot of people asking for headphones and like normal things, which is to be expected. But Dallas to LaGuardia was eventful. So um, one of the good things was that for the, the whole day today, we kept the plane. So we didn't have to take our bags off and move to another gate, move to a new plane. But because of everything that's going on right now, we have to get off the plane for them to disinfect it and everything. So me and the crew got off the plane and we walked like the concourse in Dallas just for a few minutes. So we get back and I get to the gate and the gate agent's like, finally, where were you? I'm like, excuse me? And she's like, where were you where's the other one i said he's just around the corner he'll be here in a second and she's like well he needs to hurry up don't you see what time it is i'm like ma'am it's nowhere near boarding time we have we have at least two or three minutes like there's no rush so i ignored what she said and i continued on to the plane but i told the lead flight attendant he's like she needs to calm down so we start boarding and one of the the other flight attendant comes to the back with the bag and I'm like, wow, we're the bins are full already. And she's like, oh, no, this bag, um, the handle is broken, so it needs to be checked because it can't fit in the overhead bin. So I was like, OK, well, I'll send a message to the gate agent so that she knows that we need a bag tag for this bag. So I sent the message so that when she comes down, she has a tag ready. This lady messaged back and was like, we don't check bags here you need to find a space for it who made you like what who made you the bag tag police 
the bag needs to be checked. You don't get to say that it's not being checked. So I wrote back again, once again, we need a bag tag for this bag. The bag is broken. Thank you. I'm like, ma'am, why are you making this so much difficult? So difficult. It's not, it's not necessary. So I mess. I called the lead flight attendant and let him know what was going on. And he sent a message to like, basically like, if you don't give us the bag tag, this bag is not going with us. And the delay will be put on you. So she brings the bag tag down and is like, we don't check bags. Um, then they're going to say, we were basically giving us a hard time, but she took the bag. So we're like, okay, well, everyone's boarded. Like, why can't we leave? Oh, we're waiting on two passengers. So the two passengers finally get on. We board, we close the boarding door. We're doing our safety demo. And this lady is like hailing me down, like going like this the whole time. And I'm like, hold on. Like, I can't move during the safety demo. So I finally go over to her and she's like, I want headphones. And I'm like, okay, you can get headphones after I'm finished what I'm doing. Like, I didn't see the sense of urgency in that, but okay. So I go to the back, I get her the headphones and I'm trying to hand them to her and she's like not responding. So I'm like waving the headphones, like maybe, you know, she's not paying attention and she's still not like acknowledging that I'm trying to hand her the headphones. So I'm like, leaning down to see like is she asleep her eyes are wide open she finally slowly takes the headphones so i walk away and i go to the back and i'm speaking to the flight attendant in the back i'm like the lady that i just handed headphones like something's off with her she i don't know like what's going on so she's like hmm that's strange we'll keep an eye on it so we're in the air now we do our little service and now we're sitting down in our jump seats because there's nowhere else for us to sit and someone rings the call light so I get up to go and answer the call light as I am making my way to the row that has the light on all I see is a passenger put their hand in front of me really quick it's like no stop so I stop and I'm like what's wrong and she's like there's vomit right there don't step on it and I'm like what so I look down guess who decided to vomit in the aisle on the floor the same headphone lady that I was just talking about so I turn back around and I go back and I tell the flight attendant in the back I'm like hey this lady just threw up on the floor like what what do we do because fun fact I've never really dealt with vomit on a flight people have thrown up of course but it's never really been a mess or I've never had to clean it up or anything like that so I didn't know what to do so she's like, okay, like I'll figure it, like I know what to do. We'll we'll take out this kit and we'll pour this little solution on top of it and it'll like solidify it and we'll just scoop it up. So she got everything ready and as my crew me my other crew member is cleaning up the vomit, the same lady who stopped me was like, she has it all in her hair and she flipped her hair and now it's all on my screen. So she we had to clean that up and it was just a mess. Like she was like leaning in the aisle we were like are you okay and she's like barely answering it was just a bizarre experience so we kept an eye on her from the flight and now it's time to land when i say this was the bumpiest landing i've ever experienced we were it was like the turbulence video from key and peel like shaking left and right at one point we dropped and my feet went like flying up in the air i was like okay <laughs> this is getting out of hand um i think i told you guys they assigned me a turn for tomorrow i swapped out of my turn for sunday to for another one so yeah we work tomorrow a fort myers turn which is florida so we'll see how these passengers behave but that is going to be the end of this video so i will see you guys in part two of this a day block which will be tomorrow the turn so thank you guys for watching this video and i will see you in my next one soon stay safe and see you later